Hi, welcome to Convince Me Audio. Today we have the review of these, the unique melody Mest, Mark 1. There is so much to say. Let's talk. These in-ear monitors come in at $1,300 usually, but they have been discontinued and replaced by the Mark IIs. Those are coming in for review at a later date. But it does not make these redundant due to the fact their focus is slightly different in regards to their frequency response on different areas to the Mark I's and they can live alongside these without replacing them utterly. So. Let's get the superficial things out of the way. The cable is braided, horrible, plasticky, keeps its shape, don't care for it, replace it ASAP. My buddy over at Viking Weave Schedra makes absolutely incredible jewelry style cables if you're interested and if that's your thing. Some people don't care for cable replacements. Um, these sound fine, so they'll do you fine, but they just feel a bit janky. Uh, the shell is plasticky, mediocre, down the road, and the shape is quite good. There's a nice indentation at the back here to actually cup the inside of the ear shell. So they're very, very comfortable. Um, and the two pin connector has got a shroud, which I absolutely love because I think the standard two pin is just a bit finicky and annoying to put on and take off, etc. Um, this just seems a little bit more natural and they go up so the cord has got a tendency to wrap around the ear quite successfully so that's good um, the bore is where you might find trouble this bore is huge and wrapping a tip around this is a tricky business in regards to the size and the way it fits inside your ear canal now i spent the first day tip rolling about 30 tips before I settled on these spiral dots which are the best seal balanced sounding providing the messed magic. I found four others which I'll get into in a bit that I found discrepancies across the frequency response and uh, their delivery which was a bit irritating. Um, so I'm going to link all the tips down below just to make your life a little easier when you pick these up because trust me you're going to want to. So, the review is based on these spiral dot tips which fit my ears absolutely perfectly, give me a good seal, provide all the mess magic and sound balanced across the board. So, the case is nice design, useful with a couple of compartments for the actual IEM so they don't bash into each other inside there. It's adequate. You don't want to put this in your pocket. You want to put it in a bag and it'll keep them safe. None of that really matters. Apart from the fact that these are comfortable, none of it matters because what matters is the sound. Let's break it down, shall we? These IEMs provide some of the most engaging, incredible, unique sounding staging and layering I have heard in the last 16 years. Quite frankly, it's shocking. So these IEMs have eight drivers in them with a five-way crossover, one dynamic driver for the bass region, two balanced armatures for the upper mid-range, two more for the treble region and a pair of ESTAT drivers for the absolute top end of the treble frequency and they provide one more unique driver, a bone conduction driver in this plate that sits against the ear shell to aid with the mid-range. But that's all jibber jabber talk. How do these actually sound? For somebody who doesn't care about frequency response and about drivers and how they're built, how does this sound? Should they spend all that money? These IEMs have some of the most engaging, captivating, unique sounding soundstage and layering I have heard in my 16 years of testing IEMs. It's unlike 
anything you've heard previously. So much so that it actually takes your brain to acclimatize to their sound signature and to what they do over a few days rather than being hit with it instantly. When you listen to a song, it's unlike presentation from other IEMs such as like this one, the Anol VX. The review of this one will be coming in later. Or like this one over here, the Sony IER Z1Rs. Review for that also coming in soon. These are not traditional sounding IEMs. To some, I have heard that they don't sound cohesive. I think this is a mistake. You need to listen to these IEMs on their own merit. So, let me break down the staging. Where a traditional IEM will have a singer here, and then you have like the drums here, the guitar here, and behind them maybe the orchestra or the backing vocals, and it's usually a 360 degree field, or a complete encompassment around the head like this, it's got a traditional 360 degree sounding stage, which is great, with absolutely no dead spots. But the way it layers the sound, the way it provides the image, you're not listening to a song, you're watching a song. It's basically like an engineer sitting down to each individual song and going, okay, I have this song, how can I captivate the listener? How can I make every single nuance of the music and the tonality and the song stand out? It's like an artist painting a picture with sound. It's absolutely mind-blowing what they do. So, you have a singer here. And unlike traditional IEMs, if there is drums around the singer, she will be here, the snare drum will be here, the tom-toms will be going around her like this, the hi-hat will be here and here. So it's as if the singer is standing on the stool of the drummer. It's the weirdest presentation. When you hear a guitar and a riff, the actual chords go from here to the middle of the stage to over the singer's shoulder like spanning across the stage. The way the music breaks apart is quite intriguing. The way the music shatters is like being on an acid trip. Every single nuance of the sounds is balanced and focused in the air. It's like shaking one of those big snow globes. You know, you have the house in the middle here, but you have every single speck of the snow around the house floating in the air. And that's what each individual sound like. It's intangible. It's as if you can reach out and actually touch each individual element. It's unlike anything I've heard before. And I've had Sasvaras here. I've had the focal clears over there. I've had T1s, I've had LCD X, I've had a bunch of IEMs like these traditional and all VX. These are completely traditional. These are what Sasvaras sound like in in ear monitor form. These Sony's, for example, these sound absolutely amazing, slightly, ever so slightly V shaped, but these are all traditional. They, you're, you're, not, you're not surprised by what they do, you know? It's either a good experience or a bad experience, but it's traditional listening. But with this, you want to listen to your entire library again, just to see how these IEMs actually present the song. It's ridiculous. The way it images, the way it layers, it's like getting a deck of cards and you know when a magician flips the cards and every card just flows like this and you can see each individual one and then he packs them all up into one little tight ball. That's what the staging does. You can see right into the depth of the stage. You can see right into the width and the height of the stage. It's airy, it's transparent, it's see-through. 
you can almost reach out and touch the singer and the instruments. It's, it's remarkable. I've not heard any other IEM that will do staging and layering like this. Let's talk about the bass region. Right, the sub bass is slightly elevated. It's engaging, it's textured, it's nuanced. It's definitely there. You're going to feel it. It's impactful. It's incredibly good for EDM. The mid bass is slightly recessed. So this has a couple of caveats. For some music where the kick drum, the attack is in the slightly lower frequency region of the mid bass region, you're going to feel it. It's impactful. It's great. But some EDM tracks and some other genres of music where the impactfulness of the kick drums and the attack of the music comes in the in the upper bass region and in the mid bass region it feels thin and then it, the sub bass provides a distraction for you to actually enjoy the music still but there is that slight hole there it's very well defined it's very well structured it's just a little bit layered back so that you can see into the sub bass region but it doesn't have the impactfulness of this one, the Anol VX, which is neutral and the same across the board. And I can't open it, so never mind. The mid range is warm, luscious, engaging, comes forward, goes back, transparent. It's absolutely incredible. And I think with a combination of that bone conduction driver, it delivers something that's quite unique because the staging and layering and the mid-range frequency response and the sub bass seem to be connected. They're all unified together really, really well. And if you're somebody who's really into these types of frequency bands, you're going to absolutely love this. The treble region is smooth depending on what tip you use. Some of the tips is quite harsh, especially with the letter S and the letter T, it sounds quite coarse. It's not quite sibilant. It just sounds off slightly. But there is air there. There is detail there. There is good micro detail there. The timbre on these IEMs, I wouldn't say is absolutely perfect. Uh, there is slightly timbre issues. There is slightly realistic sounding instruments issue. There is the problem of the mid bass being slightly recessed. You are getting caveats. You are getting slight flaws in, in the sound signature. It's not absolutely perfect. Does it take away anything from these IEMs? No, it doesn't, not at all. And when you get the perfect fit and they sit perfectly inside your ear shell like this it's they're quite easy they they go in and they seal it's a very very quick wearing iem just like this when you've got the most perfect tip and they isolate a hell of a lot like right now it's literally like wearing noise cancellation i have to yell to actually hear anything out there and they're very very comfortable and they fit inside the ear very, very well. So there's absolutely no issues or problems with that. That's all good. But when they're inside your ear, by moving them slightly forward or back, it has an impact on the bone conduction driver. I think they need to be sitting perfectly because that mad staging and imaging that's tied into the mid range, like I said, does have an effect. You can isolate the bone conduction driver with a lot of experience and experimentation. 100%. So for me, they need to be slightly leaning forward like this. And then you get that beautiful imaging. The reason why I keep coming back to the mid range and into the and to the staging and into the layering is because that and the sub bass is just amazing. I can't believe in 2021 we're at a point where we're getting this kind of performance in the $1,000 region. It's a fantastic time to be alive.
What I love about these IEMs, it allows you to experience music unlike you have before. So even the most boring, dullest song you've heard previously will sound different. It will sound unlike anything else. Because the way the IEMs break the track apart for you and provide you with this ear spectacle is so unique, you will want to keep coming back to this. Some of my lads in the audio lounge chat over at Telegram, the private chat we have, have literally replaced their headphone lineup because of these, because they're finding they're using these 70% of the time, 80% of the time more than their headphones. These are better than the focal clears. These are better than the LCD X. In my opinion, 100%. I think they provide an easier access for on the go and sitting at your desk and you're not tied to a humongous amplifier to if you want to run out and take these with you. I love them. There are times when I find myself, due to the fact that mid bass is slightly recessed uh, and I'm getting that thin sounding attack, especially in the higher end of the tom toms on the drum kit, when it attacks and it hits and it hits, it sounds a bit, it sounds a bit thin. And then when the actual bass frequency drops lower in the frequency band and then you get the attack from the sub bass and in the around the 100 hertz region I think it, it then it picks up and it's fantastic. So that's one of my caveats. The other one is the treble region. Um, though it's detailed and it's airy, I don't think the timbre is very correct. I don't think the timbre is very correct in the treble region at all. Um, and they don't sound very realistic, you know? For somebody who is into like good textures and a fantastic way of actually the track coming alive, these don't provide that. These provide a unique listening experience that is unlike anything else. There's nothing traditional about them. And I think if you've got a lineup of IEMs, these are wonderful to keep coming to. And if you have them as your one and only IEM and you've spent your time dabbling in the mid-fi region in the like $500 category, you need to sell all of those to pick these up because these destroy all of those too. I wish the timbre was slightly better. I wish the treble region had a bit more realism and it was a little bit smoother because like the LCDX, after a while, after that beautiful, incredible imaging and that incredible layering, it's like your brain is asking for a tiny bit more. If you've not heard IEMs that do these things perfectly, you are never going to notice any of that stuff. But for somebody who's got like 6k worth of IEMs to review at the moment between this lot, you do hear the discrepancies, unfortunately after a while. After the honeymoon period is over, you do hear some of the discrepancies. But what sells these is that incredible imaging, that incredible layering, and that incredible sub bass, and that fantastic mid-range. What puts people off is they're not traditional. They don't do a traditional staging sound, they don't do a traditional layering sound, and some of the timbre and realism is sacrificed. So you pay your money and you take your pick. But I'm telling you now, in this region, nothing touches these. And unless you're looking for that realism, that traditional sound in IEM, I think that these two, the Anol VX and the Sony's inside these two cases, are double the price and you don't get double the performance at all. Let me paint you a picture. You place these IEMs in your ears. You play a song you've heard a thousand times before. You know where every single instrument is. You know every nuance of the track. You know the texture of the voice. You know the placement of the staging. You know the atmospheric sound of the staging and the ambience and even possibly the microphone pickup quality and then 
you listen to these and realize every single one of those aspects has been thrown out of the window. Where you think instruments were are no longer there because they're all around you. They're captivating you. Every nuance of sound is in front of your eyes or around your ears, over your head, and it compacts and then expands like a rose. It opens up and you can see every single petal, each petal being the sound. It's like being on an acid trip. It's like walking up to each individual sound and gazing at it. I have tested Sasvaras here and they are traditional, incredible, but these can live alongside them. A very rare thing to say, despite some of their caveats in regards to timbre and smoothness in the treble region and that slight dip in the mid bass region. Because they are unlike anything you have heard before. The vocals are laid back and then suddenly in another track they come right up to your face and they're so transparent and nuanced and layered you can actually hear the expression of the vocalist's voice and your ears are looking everywhere because they don't want to miss a single thing because each individual sound is just wandering around in this stage by itself and you think, how the hell is this doing this? You hear a guitarist's fingers going across the fretboard and plucking each string and it's in front of your eyes and it's not contracted together here if the guitarist is playing here. Each chord goes from across the stage like this. It's the most bizarre experience. And each sound just goes let me show you in the most artistic way how this instrument sounds. When you get a reverb from something, it goes ba bang rather than just the music here, the instrument here, and then the reverb just going around, expanding from the instrument itself. No, the reverb or the effect, if it's been added on in post production, bounces across the stage so that it's almost as distinct as the instrument itself. Movie watching and TV watching on these is just a remarkable experience because if the movie is being edited well in regards to its sound and it's got a really decent sounding backing track, you get the incredible backing track as if you're listening on obviously monitors and then you get all these sounds like walking across the stage, front, back, forward, upside down, inside out. It's mesmerizing. I don't like gaming on these though, unfortunately, unless you're playing like a, uh, just, just for a movie experience, um, it's not very accurate for that. You can't actually game with these very well, but you can actually enjoy watching a gameplay on these very, very well. I hope that describes some of the nuances and the technicality and incredible dynamic range and fantastic delivery of these IEMs in this soliloquy. For more reviews like this and for the review of the unique Melody Mest Mark II, please subscribe, press the notification icon so that you're alerted when it goes live. I would like to take a moment to thank my Patreon members my Tigers, thank you so much for your support at the beginning of the channel and thank you for keeping our audio lounge chat over there alive. Your help is greatly appreciated and a great big thank you to my higher tier members Lux and Vince. You are legends. I am Koji CEO. I will see you next time. Peace.